everybody. We're here on, uh, at, well, at Hagnaya Port, Santa, um, on our way to Santa Fe, or trying to get on our way to Santa Fe, but, but the wind, as you can see, is uh, really rough. The ocean's really rough out there, choppy, white, white caps everywhere. And uh, the ferry, they canceled the last trip because the ferry's it's blowing it sideways and the passengers can't even get off here. So, and you probably got a ton of wind noise. I'm trying to cover the microphone. I'm trying to cover the microphone with my hand so it's not so uh, much wind noise. But anyway, so uh, fortunately, my brother-in-law drove us from uh, Cebu City to here, and then he turned around and was going to go back. But we found out in enough time that he hadn't really gotten down the road, but maybe 15 minutes that they canceled the last uh, ferry. And so. Uh, uh, we're just waiting here, watching, uh, and waiting for my brother-in-law to turn around and come back and pick us up. Uh, we have uh, my wife's brother, two brothers live in Bogo, so that's just 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from here, so it'll be easy. We'll spend the night there and then in the morning come back and catch the ferry over to Batayan Island when the wind's not blowing. But those people there, they can't get off the boat. <laughs> And all these people here, they are going to have to spend the night in the terminal building over there. They're going to sleep on the plastic benches and stuff. So Anyway, we, that boat is, I don't know what he's doing. He's running his engine, maybe trying to keep himself from swinging sideways into this boat. I don't know what he's doing. But anyway, it's a stormy afternoon in the Philippines. And we will be back with more My Paradise on Italian Island. They can't get off the boat. Bye for now. All right, everybody, we are back uh, to catch the ferry. This is the next day after that one ferry couldn't swing around and turn. This guy, I think the guy just didn't know how to drive. I don't know. You know, the captain just wasn't experienced e enough. It was windier, but it's not, it's still pretty windy. I mean, I mean you can see everything blowing around. You can see like that blowing and stuff blowing. And right this minute, and I'm standing kind of in the way of this, uh, this tugboat's blocking the wind, and that ferry is blocking the wind, and all this electrical stuff is blocking the wind for me because I'm trying to stay out of the wind so that you guys can hear me without a bunch of wind noise. Yeah, but they're, they're, uh, running the ferries back and forth and that's a big ferry that's the biggest one that we have there you load him up with all kinds of trucks you can see the two uh, passenger buses uh, gasoline fuel uh, tank over there uh, truck uh, all kinds of construction material trucks and stuff so that's a big boy that's what we're riding back on so he ought to be fine today it's you can see cloudy overcast blowing little misty kind of wind and that I don't know what late what time it was when they finally you know got that uh, previous ferry to get on I was hooked kind of stuck on that corner there and it couldn't get off because the wind was blowing the back end that way and it couldn't drive swing the back end around enough or whatever uh yet you know to get in a position to straighten up and come in and drop his front his front door down his front ramp he couldn't drop that ramp down so nobody could get off because they're stuck back there with the ramp up in the air uh and so uh i met a guy and and he uh you know the i think you saw him was uh gonna have to sleep here in the terminal right there it's under construction by the way as you can see they're building uh, a new terminal here they're doing a lot of infrastructure stuff which is really great uh, let's see all this scaffolding and stuff uh, I think they're also dredging the channel those are uh, I think dredging uh, barges there and this tugboat uh, helps move them around to and that other tugboat over there on the back side, he uh, helps uh, move around the, the dredging barges. So, anyway, I think we're going to make it today, hopefully, if nothing gets any uglier than what it is now. 
the uh, forecast said uh, we're like 29 mile an hour winds, not kilometer, but mile per hour. So that's about not quite double kilometers, but somewhere in that a little bit less than double uh, in kilometers. So 50, say 50 kilometer winds, roughly like that. So uh, anyway, everybody's getting off. Here comes the here comes the bus. He's uh, unloading, and then uh, this is by the way, this is the path I think we have to take. Maybe they'll tell us to go the smooth way there, but that is a gate, and this is I don't know. I mean, oh, people can walk on this. I don't think you know, like an old lady or old guy wasn't too good on this on his feet so they'll probably have us go out there and around and come in through the the other gate I'll show you that if I can get down there but see all the rocks and rubble yeah this is the gate they're going out of that's the gate we'll probably have to go outside and walk around through down down on the street where it's smooth and everything so there's a lot of cars on them there. Everybody's leaving Batania now. I think that they're backed up from y yesterday. They had a ferry leave at 1 a.m. this morning, and that went oh, okay. And that guy that I told you slept uh, in the terminal, he got on. I texted him this morning to see if he had gotten on uh, the ferry yet, and he had, and gotten back to Batania. So there's a ton of cars on there. I've never seen so many cars. I, that thing was just like loaded. Look at them all. They're all just lined up, and there's all 10 more went out there. So 10, almost 20 cars on the ferry, and three, three series buses, a fuel truck, because you know, Battalion Island has to have gasoline, and they drive those there every day. They're, they're going back and forth every day, loading uh, fuel trucks at some point in the day. Uh, and then the, the truck at the back can either be construction materials, rebar, cement, stuff like that, uh, or it, it can be eggs. Because, uh, you know, we produce over a million eggs a, a day on Battalion Island. So, I think, well, I hope, I guess, we're going to be good, good to go and make it back to Bentayan. I got a, a generator that I bought. I bought originally bought a, a 1,000 watt, uh, 1,200 watt surge Briggs and Stratton, but I was running it right at the limit, uh, anywhere from well, roughly 1,000 watts plus, uh, and after maybe 30 hours of that, it burned out the automatic voltage regulator. It's a little module about the size of two fingers plastic that uh, controls the voltage. Now the voltage gauge just goes like that. It's just swinging off and back and forth like crazy. Before it just set on 230 volts or 40 or 20, 20 just hang, you know, running good. But then it started just swinging all over the place and tripping the the circuit breaker, the overload breaker. So uh, I picked up a 3,000 watt and I'll show that to you when I get home and get it all unboxed. And that, and it's the, roughly the same size and weight as the 1000. And it's a German design, of course, built in China, you know, but to German, uh, whatever the company that owns it, United Power, I think it's called. And uh, it's really nice because it's got heat shielding everywhere between the uh, muffler and the uh, generator electrical generator motor and heat shielding between the muffler and the engine and heat shielding between the muffler and the gas tank because all the other ones don't have any heat shielding between any of those things and uh, mufflers when I checked it with my little laser gun thing I think it was running four almost 500 degrees and and just uh, and it's only an inch and a half away from everything the gas tank and the electrical windings and the actual generator motor 
and it'll just start melting wires and stuff, you know, and boiling the gasoline, and it's just, so I built a, a little shield. I bought some uh, sheet metal and cut it to size and bent it so it, uh, for the thousand watt unit, and uh, so it shield the gas tank and the motor, the electrical generator motor, because it's got the gasoline motor. And that's got a drive shaft thing that comes out and goes to the electrical generator motor. And uh, so I did all that, but that wasn't the ultimate issue. It's just I was running too much power. I was running my aircon, one horsepower, it runs 970 watts max. And uh, okay. he's buying stuff here. Probably uh, clothing and stuff for his business. Yeah, do, do you, yeah. Do you have a business? Okay, not paying attention to me. But anyway, so anyway, I'll show you the new generator when I get home. We fired it up. It's really quiet too. It's it's the quietest generator, and it's not vibrating and bouncing the Briggs and Stratton, which should be at least a decent American engineered uh, generator. It kind of is rattling and making all kinds of noise, and uh, uh, it uh, like I said, uh, heat, vibration, and just louder than this new one is 3,000 watts and 3,200 peak so the peak is not that much more than uh, than uh, uh, continuous power but it'll run for nine hours uh, continuous at 50 percent load so at 1500 watts it'll run nine hours continuous so that's good I can run my refrigerators I can pretty much run the whole house just you know, refrigerators, my air con, and lights and fans, that's about all that I run. I'm not going to run like any electrical cooking appliances because those crank out like 1200 watts. That's, uh, that'll trip the breaker on the generator for sure. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go check. Everybody's off. All the trucks are off of this big boy here, and we should be loading here pretty soon. So, I'm going to head back to the terminal, walk through the rubble field of the construction zone, and we'll be back with more Riding the Ferries to Bentayan Island. Bye for now. Hey everybody, it is a stormy day at sea today, and we're getting ready to head back to Bentayan Island, and as you can see, you can barely see. <laughs> Yesterday they couldn't even park these boats here. They the the back end because the wind was blowing this way towards us now, and it would blow the back of the boat over to the side, and they couldn't get the the bow of the boat in where the ramp was, and people couldn't get in and uh, out off the boat or in the boat. But uh, right now it's rain's blowing at about a 60 degree angle that away, or that away is about 60 degrees. Out of way, out of way is about 60 degrees, so that's the way the wind's blowing right now. Walk around the back of the boat here. This is the anchor motor here to pull the anchor up if they ever have to anchor, which I don't know. I don't know if this even works, but if it does, that is the monster. That's the motor. That's the gearbox, and these. That's, that's the gear that this motor runs through there and turns the gearbox, turns that gear, it turns this big wheel and rolls the anchor up or down. And this is an anchor brake, like a like a drum brake on a car. You tighten this thing up and it squeezes that and slows down the drop of the anchor or locks it in place, I guess, if you wanted to. I don't know if you can lock I guess you can lock, lock it because if you only need, like, 30 meters out, you wouldn't just let the boat start drifting. So you lock it down with that wheel. There. Here's the pump here too, how you get water. Like that. On a ship. 
So if you ever at the back of the boat here, yeah, that's where you pump it. There you go. You'll be on YouTube. So anyway, yeah, it's just the old type of farm water pump thing. They pump it obviously from the ocean. That's uh, salt water there that you get from from the ocean. So anyway, you got your anchor, you got your salt water pump. They also have a sink here, and I'm guessing that might be fresh water. I just kind of rinsed my hands there, and I think that's fresh. And that's got to be some pressurized water because it's just got a valve with no pump. I don't know where that goes. Down below deck where the engines are. Oh, this is the kitchen. This is the galley. Yeah, where everybody uh, eats or cooks their food and stuff. You can see on the ferry. Here. So, uh, yeah, the crew, you know, basically hangs out on here for however long. This is where you tie your uh, ropes, your dock ropes and stuff, too. Tie them up that little T thing there. Over here, where it says hot surface, that's the, uh, that's, that's the exhaust coming out of the in engine. I can feel the heat all the way from here. And it's a it's it's a chilly day here. I'm guessing it's 70 ish, right around 70 degrees, and the wind's blowing, and it's you know kind of rainy, so damp, all that stuff. So yeah, those are the uh, I believe those are dredges. I, I think they're digging the channel and a tugboat there and a dredge, some kind of dredge there. I'm guessing, or maybe a barge that they dumped the. Uh, stuff that they dig up from the ocean floor and that I think is the actual dredging machine that scoops down and picks the digs up the mud uh, deep in the channel deep in or widen it and that's another one there that does the same thing over there so we are downstairs and we got a I think a Jackie Chan movie playing uh, downstairs and uh, oh here's the uh, the place where you can get some noodle soup or some chips or drinks uh, there's your Pepsi there's your little Nova chips and stuff and usually they'll have some noodle soup there's one there one noodle soup left they may have some in the boxes there so, Anyway, I hope there's not too much noise here. And then we're kind of back around on the area where we left. So we kind of looped around this little back center where the where the restrooms and stuff are here. That's a men's room. And see, we're back to the pump and the anchor thing. So we basically circled the, uh, the little CR and uh, galley uh, building or square right here. And we're downstairs. Over oh, here's the engine room, as you can see. You have to wear your uh, the earphones there because it's so loud from the diesel diesel en engines. I have no idea what this gas is for, but some kind of gas, and it doesn't tell what kind of gas it is, but it's some bunch of gas tanks. Pressure. labels and I don't see anything saying what kind of gas it is. So anyway, they're putting all the cars on here and the boats and the buses there. And this is, this is probably the biggest uh, ferry that we have going back between uh, North Tip of Cebu Island and uh, Mentayan Island. So today we're going to put three of these series buses, maybe four on here and who knows, a bunch of cars and just general uh, trucks that are hauling miscellaneous things and as you can see the winds whipping pretty strong here so walk across here these are your life preservers in these cabinets so things really get ugly there's some more cars. Yeah, so we got three of the series buses. We got two 
over there on that side. There's one there and one behind him and this guy and then all these cars and all those cars. So we're not quite fully loaded yet, so I don't know how long they're going to wait, but usually they wait as long as they want <laughs> to, uh, you know, because they make more money per ride. Oh, i got to get back from there. It's blowing pretty hard. So anyway, we will uh, walk the rest of the way around this way. We're kind of circling the opposite way now. Here's the other engine room side of the engine room. Back to the barges, the dredges. That's a fish trap. I mean, a fish farm kind of a thing over there. They're they're doing some experimental fish farming. And uh, so I'll walk back here and leave you with a picture of a dredge through what looks kind of like a porthole. Then we'll be back with more from my paradise on Battalion Island. Bye for now. All right, since I walked around the lower deck of the boat, which is this one here, passengers, place to eat, uh, get by some snacks and stuff, the restrooms back there, and the uh, cruise galley and uh, anchor uh, motors and the water pump. You can wash your hands in that water pump if they don't have water. We're going to go upstairs now. And these stairs are about a foot high step because I guess they only had this much distance from here to there to get up there. So they had to make them one foot instead of six inches, which would make the staircase come way out here, I guess. So I'm trying to give them an excuse for making these ridiculous high stairs that there ain't no old lady or old man can climb up. Because that's like climbing a mountain. So now we're on the second deck. And the third deck is up through there, but that's for crew only. And I think that's where the captain and the uh, uh, cockpit and all that is. But here we got beds. And because they're doing the uh, you know, social distancing, you can only lay on every other bed. Like you can lay on this bed, but you can't lay on that one. See, it's got the little masking tape X. And you can't lay on this one because this one's next to this one, but you can lay on that one. So you can, these two diagonally you can, those two diagonally you can't. And they, uh, there's no mattress there, but those are, are a little mattress pad, but there's one. But again, they got the TVs here. Sometimes they'll show movies and what have you. But uh, they got the curtains down now. All these white tarpaulin things are down now because uh, the wind and rain coming through. In fact, you can see it right there, blowing in the back. That's the kind of the direction the rain's coming from, kind of over there. It's coming this away, this away. So, anyway, this is all the stuff that we brought back from Cebu. We got all these bags here, and we got my backpack, Lindy's backpack, some groceries. Uh, I got a little angle grinder in there, and then I don't know if you saw downstairs where that uh, dolly was, that little airport kind of travel dolly was, and we're walking between these things. You can lay down and sleep and whatever. Here's your life preservers. They're here above the beds on this side. And uh, so again, there's your upper deck the third floor but that dolly right there that's my generator and then in these two we got just some canned foods and stuff so uh, we're heading back with that so anyway that is the full walk around on this particular ferry each ferry is a little bit different uh, used to they only had chairs like plastic chairs not th these are now steel chairs whoops I'm gonna walk back there there's water a little mud puddle thing but uh, I don't know where my wife went this is our stuff but she's 
nowhere to be found right now. So anyway, I gotta go track her down and we'll be back with more. Let's look out here and see what's behind curtain number one. Oh, it's an ocean and a storm. So anyway, we'll be back with more from my paradise on Battalion Island. Bye for now. So I did find my wife. Those are my feet there. That's not my wife. Or my wife's feet. That's my feet. But she was here in this little bed. The bunk, I guess you would call it. The, these are like bunk beds. And uh, so she, anyway, she went to rinse her hand. There's a sink downstairs that I showed you with the fresh water and a squid jig in, in it. I, did, I don't know if I showed you that, but I should have. <coughs> uh, so anyway, I'm just laying down here. Laying the breeze the storm breeze blowing through that tarpaulin opening there and it's very cool and very comfortable and once we get out on the open ocean it's going to be rocking and rolling a little bit these are big boats so they don't rock and roll that much but they do rock and roll and then we'll get to Bataillon Island and we will be back with more oh, there she is right there uh, she's waving so anyway, the water's blowing in there, so that bed is all wet. The foot of this bed is a little bit damp, but my feet are down there, so I don't really care. Uh, that bed's all wet, because like I said, the rain and wind is blowing in through the, between the tarpaulins there. So anyway, we will be back with more. Oh, she's drying hers off here. We're all wearing masks and stuff, so. You know, still the COVID kind of thing. So she's going to lay down there, even though she's not supposed to. <coughs> but those two are wet, so can't lay there. So we will be back with more relaxing on the ferry and waiting to head out into the open sea and head to Bentayan Island. And we will be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island. We're kicking back now. Bye for now. Just to show you guys how rough it is. I'm actually trying to hold my camera still. Pushing myself up against the post. But look at those waves. Those are big old rolling waves, man. They're huge. I mean, they're like mountains rolling. They're so big. I've never seen them. I've seen little choppy ones, but I've never seen them as big as this. I mean, rolling like that. Which is better, it's, it's not too bad. You're just kind of rocking and rolling. And when you get the choppy ones, it's just boom, boom, boom. You know, you're hitting everything hard. But that's uh, smooth back there in the background where we came from, Agnaya Port. And uh, actually, it looks like the the wind's kind of blowing us off course. We're kind of going like this away when we should be going this away. There's the hotel, and you can see somewhere out there on the show you the hotel but it's over over there and normally it's somewhat straight behind us so it's kind of the ferry's like drifting doing kind of like a crosswind crab if you know air uh, airplane landing kind of stuff or kind of uh, going at a weird angle because the, the current's pushing it so hard yeah we're rocking and rolling here boys and girls I don't think we're going that fast. It doesn't look like it. I mean, you can see all the all the turbulence and stuff being thrown up by the the props. Doesn't look like we're really moving fast. We've been an hour, I think, since we left, and uh, we ain't even halfway there yet. Three o'clock, and yeah, we're still uh, still trying to get there. We need to head back 
that away. I'm at the back of the boat, by the way, of course, you can tell by the prop wash, but yeah, this thing is, uh, there's the water rolling around, the, rolling around the deck. You can see it there sloshing around. Uh, let me go up front here and see if I can see something more out the side. I got, I got a rock in my shoe too, so I gotta stop and somehow get that out. But we'll see. Yeah. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm surprised there's as many people out here really trying to look and see what's going on. But there's many steps right here. Yeah, those waves, those are like five, six, seven foot swells. I don't know. I mean, when you're down at the bottom, you, and we're on a big boat here, so I had to get back. The, the wind is so much there, I don't know if you can hear me, but it's like five or six foot swells at least. And we're on such a big boat, it's kind of hard to tell exactly how big the swells are. But when you're on a, like a regular fishing boat, like I had a 20, I had a 24 foot fishing boat one time, and we was, uh, going up and down between the swells and the weird thing was is that when we were down in the bottom of the swell the wave was higher than the boat was uh, at, the, at, at the tip of the swell the top of the swell so uh, I looked at my friend Jim and I go I think we need to go back home <laughs> we're about 10 miles out in uh, San Diego uh, shark fishing in the uh, Oceanside uh, Canyon there but uh, all it took is one freak wave to come over and just swamp you know my 24 foot boat at that time I, I upgraded to a 27 foot boat later but still in seas like that you just go home fortunately we're on a 300 foot boat and uh, you can feel it rocking, but it's not that bad. It's just that the swells, because the, the boat's so long that, wow, look at that wave. I don't know if you can see it, man. But that, I mean, the thing about the camera, you don't get the depth perception you do in reality. But when those big swells come, man, you, you, they, they just look, I mean, it's just mountainous. It's amazing. So, anyway, it's windy, it's rocky, it's bumpy. I'm going to go back to my little cushiony little cubby uh, cubby bunk and we'll be back with more stormy seas on Battalion Island. Bye for now. against the other ferries but I couldn't get it because everybody started jumping in front of me. Oh. It is a stormy day here on Battalion Island. Look at all those white caps. They're, we're kind of uh, the ferry's blocking. Look at all those buses and stuff wanting want to get on the next ferry. Never seen that much, uh, many of them backed up. Pretty much slopping, slopping against that boat right there. We're trying to pull in here, but the wind's blowing our tail in around. And I don't know how he's gonna do it. Unless he's a good drive, driver, captain. Trying to trying to position himself in here. This may or may not work. See, we're about to smash into that boat. He's, he's doing it. Watch this. Watch, 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 watch. We're about to hit it. We just hit it. Boom. We just hit it. So it's kind of using him as, as like a little bumper stop. Trying to pull in. 
get get into the, the ferry port here. You can hear him revving up the engines. It's kind of rubbing down the side of that boat to kind of help push our back end around. See, he's hitting it all, all the time. We're dragging that ship there. Well, I'll stay here. Right, right there. So that boat's tied down, so he's kind of staying where he is. See, we're scraping down the side of that boat. Using him as like a, like a guide, like I said. There we go. Finally bringing the, the bow of the boat around and the back out, away from that one now. But yeah. <laughs> It's a good trick and it worked. These boats are all scraped up anyway. They're always uh, bumping and bumping and grinding. So now they're throwing out the big ropes to tie the front end uh, in position so that they can uh, get everybody off. Uh, well, I call my friend. Okay, I don't need it now. My uh, my friend is gonna come. I mean, but thank you. Yeah, but thank you. Uh, yeah, I was gonna go, but nobody had a bus, so uh, I called my friend and he's coming. Yeah, I was gonna try to ride one of the buses. I was gonna try to put all my stuff on the buses. Uh oh, here. I thought we was gonna smash into that boat again, and we may. I think we're going to. We're headed for it. We're swinging with the waves. What they do is they they uh, tie these huge ropes there, they're like three inches or four inches diameter ropes. Here we go. We're about to smash it. There we go. Boom. Hit it. Just hit it. Boom. Hit it again. So, uh, here we go again. Boom. Hit it again. Boom, hit it again. <laughs> That's how rough this sea is. I'm going to get out of these folks' ways. They're trying to get out of here, and I'm kind of waiting till the end to get out. I can kind of go around here, and you can see us bumping and grinding. Boom. There we go. Boom, hit it. Yeah. They got those little bumps bumper things on the sides, not like a like a fender, but just a steel, like a half of a pipe welded around the, the box on the boat right there, that line there, and that's kind of what we're bumping and grinding with. <laughs> so, anyway, we're up and down and all around, so... Once they secure the front of the boat, that'll kind of help it. It'll still swing a little bit, but like I said, they got huge ropes there that they tie us up with, and so the the back doesn't swing back and forth. But yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm surprised they even drove the boat uh, today, but you know everybody they got everybody backed up. They got all those. You saw that line of. Uh, Buses and trucks waiting to get on. They're, they're, everybody's trying to get back and forth now. So, so I'm going to uh, go tell my wife get her bags and stuff, and then we'll come down here and I'll get the generator and everything that's on the dolly, and we'll roll on off. You can still see the front's kind of wiggling around. up and down, seesawing. So anyway, rocking and rolling on Battalion Island. Ferries, bye for now. <laughs>